This is Birkenhead Town Hall and Birkenhead is on the opposite side of the river to Liverpool so from the Woodside Ferry at Birkenhead you can look across to the Liverpool skyline, some iconic buildings including the Liver buildings which are fairly well known. And if you'd like to live on this side of the river you wouldn't want to live in the town centre perhaps but you don't have to go much further than a mile down the river to find a pleasant leafy area with a rather wild looking beach. There are some very tall mature trees and there are big old houses you can live in I guess many of them are turned into flats. Uh, many of them have a view of the river. There's also a row of terraced houses that uh, look out on the River Mersey and you can also find a renovation to do I expect by the look of it. This area is called Rock Park, so if you're on to right move and looking for a place, there have been a few over the last few months and gone up for sale in Rock Park. Um, the area has, as I mentioned, a wild beach. There's probably a chance to do a little boating if the tide is in. Uh, there's definitely a chance to get some refreshments. You'll find that this place is just at the end of Rock Park. I mentioned Woodside Ferry, well this is it, and um, there's an interchange for buses, uh, you can get onto the ferry here from the bus, uh, there's also some car parking in front of the ferry terminal, and there's also a vintage tram service that runs down to the ferry, so if you're coming over from Liverpool on the ferry and you want to see the Rural Transport Museum, then this tram is your answer. A ride on the tram takes you through the Birkenhead Dockland area past the Pacific Road which used to be where the trams were kept but the tram line has now been extended right through the dock area and up across several main roads they have to stop for us uh, and up to where the Rural Transport Museum is located. So we're going to take a journey to the museum but we're not going to show you that straight away because we've got other destinations in mind. You've probably seen New York Central Park on many films and perhaps you may have also seen Birkenhead Park. The inspiration for New York Central Park comes from Birkenhead Park which is described in the local tourist guide as an idealized countryside landscape of open meadows, natural woodland and lakes shaped as rivers. Well you can see for yourself because I took the camera around there these are winter pictures with low sun and a lot of shadow but uh, they actually add some character to the whole thing a lot of birds live here, a lot of people walk their dogs here kids come to play and it has quite a large visitor centre with a really decent cafe where by the way you can get an excellent breakfast amongst other things Birkenhead Park is attributed to Joseph Paxton but in fact um, he laid it out following the Third Improvement Act Birkenhead of 1843. He was appointed by several other people who were involved in the construction and design of the park and the park was finally opened in 1847. In 1850 Frederick Law Olmsted visited the site and the design influenced his own designs for Central Park in New York which then opened in 1858. So now you know. Well we have a lot of viewers to this program who are interested in transport so we better go back to that transport museum on the Wirral in Birkenhead and really I don't need to say much about the exhibits here because I've found that the people who watch this generally know more about all these things than I do and they come firing facts back at me afterwards so here's some buses and trains and things hope you enjoy them I like the old cars myself
So back to the tram and our trip back to Woodside Ferry. Uh, we must first, of course, um, disconnect the electric coupling and put it back at the other end, otherwise we won't be going anywhere. So we're heading back through the docks, back to the ferry, and that's it for this month's transport.